talk about angle kits and stuff. This is it right now? Sure. All right, in this video, <laughs> we're gonna talk about BRZ FRS and the H6 angle kits and what you should do if you're gonna be drifting. Uh, we're gonna talk about the rack, we're gonna talk about control arms, tie rods, knuckles, and uh, rack spacers. Action! First of all, we're talking about racks. Everyone loves a nice rack. <laughs> uh, when you're gonna start drifting these cars, most important thing right off the bat, pull your rack out, slide it apart, clean all the shitty grease out of it, and I mean all of it. Clean it all out of these teeth. Make sure it's nice and clean, really clean. And then load it up with some nice synthetic grease. And I mean a lot of it, like load the mother effort right up with grease. <laughs> And then you'll never have to worry about uh, having rack failure. So uh, with that out of the way, we'll talk about tie rods. These are the stock tie rods. I don't know how long they are. Doesn't really matter. They're not long enough to run a rack spacer or extended control arms. So here's the alternative. They are EV455 tie rods. I think they're from like a, a Crown Vic or something. They have slightly longer threads, yeah, by like I don't know, almost a quarter inch, and they are two inches longer than stock. So you run your extended control arms, and I mean, there's not much more to be said. It's just easy; they're cheap. And on top of that, rack spacers. I think uh, I had these cut out with my friend's water jet. They're one inch outside diameter, five eighths inside diameter, and they are uh, just a hair under quarter inch thick, like. Uh, five millimeters <laughs> for, for the Canadians and these will let the rack uh, move more gives you a little bit more turn on the steering wheel okay so now we're going to talk about control arms uh, if you don't want to spend big money on aftermarket arms like PBM or something or whatever this is definitely the way to go there's a couple reasons I like to do this one I'm cheap two I'm retaining the stock rubber bushings and I mean maybe that's not the greatest thing for like full accurate steering input but it's a lot more compliant than a spherical heim it uh, it'll drive better it'll it'll feel nicer and uh, oh Christ man <laughs> if you're going for like a street kind of car or like a weekend drifter this is definitely the way to go um, there's a couple other reasons I like to run these. Uh, it's gonna be strong enough to do whatever you wanna do. They're never gonna bend, they're never gonna fold, but if you get in an actual crash, they'll bend like a wet noodle and that should save the rest of your car, which is pretty important to me because crashing happens. Um, okay, for the control arms, I'm just gonna do a quick run through of how I like to extend them. There's kind of a crude, way I like to mark them, but it works very well. You rotate them like this, put them end to end, make sure they're perfectly even. And then you take a straight edge. And I like to pick one of the little holes here to go off of. Make sure you can find a nice straight line, just like so, and then uh, you just draw a line across and that'll be your cut line. And then, depending on how wide you wanna go, how big of a tire you want to run, uh, how much angle you're going to go for, whether it's like 50, 55, 60, you would extend it like an inch and a quarter or an inch and a half, or in my case, uh, I did two inches because I'm going to be running a 255 up front. But uh, very, very simple, very, very simple control arm setup and strong enough to do what you want to do. We're gonna have a quick little talk about roll center correction. If you plan to keep your car at stock height, you can just disregard this. Uh, this is only really important for people that are gonna lower their car like more than an inch or more than two inches. But when you go to lower your car, your control arms are gonna start to sit like that and uh, that's not good for suspension geometry, camber gain, roll center. 
I mean, I'm not a genius. I can't really explain roll center very well, but it's just the tendency of the car to roll or body roll. And it's, is the arms change height? I don't know how to explain that. Anyways, if, uh, if you're gonna lower your car and you don't wanna buy like PBM knuckles or some other kit with roll center correction included, you can buy extended ball joints and all that's gonna do is allow you to lower your car and let the arms sit closer to flat. And uh, with the extended ball joints, you're gonna get extended tie rods. So it'll actually drop the tie rod down a little bit. And those are just a couple little things that will keep your suspension working closer to how it's supposed to when, when you're lowered. Okay, on the knuckles. <laughs> All right, so you're, uh, you wanna make some knuckles for your car and you don't wanna spend big money on an angle kit and you're handy with some tools or you get a friend handy with some tools. I'm gonna walk you through my two styles of modded knuckles and the benefits and the drawbacks of either or. First off, I'm gonna start with the redrilled knuckles. Back in the day when I was running a stock power car or even a turbo setup with like 280 horsepower, these were the tits. They are very easy to make. It literally just requires cutting off the old tie rod pickup and cleaning out some old metal, you know, thinning this up a lot, and then redrilling it with an automotive, like seven degree tapered reamer. You can get these at any proper tool store, whatever. Uh, I'll include measurements for these right here or something. I don't know how to... Anyways, I have measurements. Um, these give you, like, with the rack spacers, 54 degrees and good Ackerman. Um, I guess I should probably touch on Ackerman. If you have a low power car or you want something that's very, very street friendly, Ackerman is your friend. Uh, it's just like the the difference in how much your lead tire turns versus your, your trailing tire. With uh, lots of Ackerman, the car is going to feel better and it'll, it'll drag that uh, trailing tire, but uh, in a low power car, you're not using a lot of angle all the time, so it's, it's not going to be a problem. One of the other benefits of running the, pre or the redrilled knuckle, uh, it's stronger. Uh, you, you don't have to worry about a part that you cut and welded, and you don't have to worry about the strength of your weld. It's literally part of the factory cast metal. Like, there's no way this is going to break. If you're breaking this, you're completely totaling your car. And I think the other benefit is you can still run your brake rotor shield versus uh, the cut and welded one. You kind of got to cut that off because you're moving the pickup in even more. That looks like uh, 18 and a half, roughly. Now we're on to the cut and welded knuckles. So you ran the drilled knuckles for longer, long enough. Uh, you decide you need more angle or less Ackerman. My initial reason for going away from the old drilled knuckles was uh, I LS swapped my car, went to the track, and immediately was scrubbing the inside of the trailing tire off in like one event because when you were at full lock using all the power, it was just dragging the trailing tire severely. So I went home, cut the knuckles, followed them up for a zero Ackerman. So the way I like to tell, or measure the Ackerman, I like to put the tire rod pickup directly in line with the seam of this knuckle. It's not a very like super accurate design, but it gets you to zero Ackerman. Um, I don't know. Cut the, cut the brake dust with the brake shield bolt off and uh, bring, the, bring the pickup in like another centimeter more than the drilled knuckle. This is going to be very rudimentary, but let's see. Works out to about 17 and a half centimeters from the uh, caliper bolt to the center of the tie rod pickup bolt hole. And the, the drilled knuckles are 18 and a half centimeters from the caliper bolt hole to the center of the pickup hole. So you get like a little bit more angle, uh, no Ackerman, the steering feels great. Now uh, one of the drawbacks to this is you can't really get away with this anymore 
with the stock rack location, um, you'll start to have over-centering problems. So what you can do, you could run some aftermarket tie rods with rack relocate spacers on them, or sorry, with uh, offset rack spacers on them. I hate those, they like to break. There's no way to gonna run a good rack boot, so you're gonna destroy your rack really quickly. Um, if you wanna keep the rack in the stock position, you can put bump stops on the control arms, and that was, that was kinda, it wasn't really a hack way to do it. It worked really good, but there's definitely better ways to do it. So if, you, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna run knuckles like this, I definitely recommend uh, relocating the rack. We're doing it ourselves. Um, PPM is going to start selling a kit in six months or so to do that exact job. Uh, I, I definitely recommend doing that. So just a quick recap. We have the drilled knuckles with Ackerman. They, uh, they'll be the best option for a lower power streetcar that likes to see drifting on the weekend. You're gonna get like 50 to 52 degrees of angle and if you run the rack spacer, probably 52 to 55 degrees. And then for the zero Ackerman welded knuckles, you, you'll probably get 58 degrees, 58 to 60 degrees. And with the rack spacers, probably closer to uh, 60 to 62 degrees. You just have to have bump stops or a rack relocate or something in place. One more thing that's gonna make your life easier. When you pull the wheel bearing out of the knuckle to do your mods, whatever, it's always gonna be super stuck. When you pull it apart, wire wheel the crap out of everything, clean all the rust, wire wheel the crap out of that, or even, even sand it out, and then just put some anti seize on it when you put it back together and future you will thank you big time. Now we're gonna do a, just a quick little bonus piece about, uh, I guess, steering axis inclination. So when you extend the lower control arms, the, uh, the steering axis inclination kind of leans in more. So if you, wanna, if you want your steering to feel proper and you don't have all that jacking, you gotta push the tops of the coilovers outwards. And, uh, let me pause. Um, from factory, your strut is smack dab in the center of the strut hole. So uh, what you're going to want to do is push the tops of the struts outward as much as possible. And sometimes that requires uh, slotting the, the top plates for the coilovers. And in extreme cases, some people like to cut right here and the, the top bolt ends up out here. If you don't do that, your car is going to have like... It's, it's gonna jack up at lock. It's gonna feel weird. And in some cases, uh, if you need more caster, you can flip the, the top plates from side to side and then rotate. And then uh, you'll end up with your, your strut ball like right around here. So it'll be outwards and backwards. You'll have caster, it'll, it'll, it'll be good for steering feel. important thing about uh, having a BRZ FRS drift car is this. Depending on how much angle you're gonna run and how big of a tire and how big of a rim you're gonna run, uh, you have to make clearance back here. Now if you were, uh, you don't wanna do like a big cutting and welding job and you just wanna hammer it together, whatever, that's great. I did that on my old car. You just make some slices and you can fold all the tabs in and there will never be a problem. But uh, if you want it to be a little bit more proper and you want all the clearance as possible, you just cut that off and you build a plate, weld it to it, and then you'll never ever touch your tire to the back of the wheel all over again. My hand smells like silicone. So, uh, if this video, I don't know, gets some views and people like this, maybe I'll record a couple more videos talking about like rear ends, uh, rear suspension geometry, axles, diff stuff, whatever. I, mean, I, I, I could post LS swap stuff, but like, uh, there's a hundred videos and write-ups on the internet about how to do that crap. So, uh, hope you liked the video. Happy drifting. <laughs>